היי גייז! How lucky we are for having VCV Rack and the chance to play with modules like this one, the segment generator, originally stages for mutable instruments. We can use it to generate LFOs, complex envelopes, it's also a step sequencer, a sample and hold unit, and much, much more. In this video I will try to cover everything, with examples of course, so let's start! Okay, so let's start by looking at what we are dealing with, buttons, knobs, inputs and outputs, and then we will go ahead and start looking at the functionality of stages and at some patching ideas. So we have six different segments, and for each segment we have a shape slash time knob, a mode button, a time slash level fader with dedicated CV inputs, gate inputs, and an output for each segment. With the mode button we can choose between three different modes, ramp, step, and hold, and we can also click and hold the button to make a segment loop on itself. And we will go in a second through all the different modes and see how they look like on the scope. Now one thing important to remember, we can have six individual segments, but when wanting to combine segments, the routing will work from right to left, so if I want to combine the first three segments, I will start from the third segment from the right and work my way from there. Let's have a look at the different modes and how they look like on the scope. So ramp is the first mode, and this means that the output will ramp from one voltage to another, so if I trigger the first segment it will look like this. Now you see the little blue dot next to the time slash level and shape slash time. This indicates that in this mode ramp the fader will control the time it takes for the voltage to reach its next destination, and that the knob will determine its shape, in the middle the shape will be linear, to the left the shape will be logarithmic with a curve outwards, and to the right it will be exponential with a curve inwards. And again the fader will control the time. The next mode is step, and in step mode the output will glide to the next voltage and stay there until it receives another trigger. In this case the fader will control the level or amount of voltage, and the knob will control the glide amount. The last mode is hold, and in this mode the voltage will stay the same for an adjustable duration, and we can control the amount of voltage using the fader and the duration using the knob. Now, like I said, we can also set the different segments to loop on themselves by clicking and holding the mode button for one second, and with this we can create all sorts of things, and let's start with using stages for creating LFOs. Okay, so there will be a link in the description to all the different patches, so you can download them and have a closer look at all the different sections. And like I said, we will work our way from right to left, and let's start by connecting the first output to our scope. And let's click and hold the mode button until it's blinking. So this button here, just click and hold. It's blinking, and it's now in looping mode, and already we can see that we get a unipolar sine wave LFO. Now in this case the fader will control its frequency, so down means slower, up means faster, and the knob will control its shape, so all the way to the left we will have a sawtooth wave, all the way to the right we will have a square wave, 
And like we've seen in the middle, we have a sine wave. And in between, we can morph between the different shapes. So a bit to the left, we have a triangle wave. And we can get some funky um, shapes here, like this one, for example. Now, another cool thing we can do, we can connect our clock to the gate input of the segment we are using and sync the LFO with the clock. In this case, let's just make this connection. I will take the clock through a multiplier to the gate input of this segment we are using. And in this case, the fader will act as a clock divider slash multiplier. So we can play with the different settings. Again, down divides the clock and up multiplies it. And let's actually start building a patch using the LFO function of stages. So let's use two FM operators, my favorite oscillator, let's use two. And let's control or modulate their patch using the Turing machine. So let's add also a Turing machine. And we will connect the Turing machine to a multiplied clock output. So I have here a clock multiplied by two. Let's connect this to the clock input of the Turing machine and it's running. Let's add also a quantizer and we will use a quantum in this case and set the scale we want. Uh, let's say C, E flat, G and B flat. And let's change also the mode of the uh, quantizer to quantize upwards. And let's send the voltage from the main CV output of the Turing machine to quantum. Let's lower also a bit the uh, scale here. Very nice. Let's send this to a multiplier. And let's send this to the mult. And from the mult, we will go once to the FM operator, to the volt per octave input of the first FM operator. And once, let's add the pitch tools from 21 kilohertz and send this voltage to the pitch tools and raise the uh, pitch by seven semitones and send this to the second FM operator. Now let's take two LFOs from stages and modulate the feedback amount of both oscillators. So let's use this um, LFO here. Let's take it out of the scope and connect it to the feedback CV input of the first FM operator. And let's create another oscillator again by clicking and holding the mode button, and see, mode button until it's a looping. And let's connect again the clock to the gate input so we can sync it with our clock. And let's choose, let's take a lower frequency, let's take a division of this clock. Very nice. Let's change also the shape of the LFO a bit. Let's make it sort of a weird triangle. And let's take this out of the scope to the feedback amount CV input of the second FM operator. And let's see how this sounds like. I have here a stereo channel. We will connect this to the stereo channel. This is one, this is two. And when we start increasing the feedback amount here, we will start hearing also the modulation. So let's start with this one. Okay, let's make also the second one. So now we have a nice moving sound modulated by two segments, two LFOs from stages. Now we can add another voice using the second CV output of the Turing machine. So let's use another quantum. I will just uh, duplicate this here. And let's change it to last mode. So we have less change in pitch. And we will use braids in this case. And we will change braids to triple sawtooth mode. This one. So we have three sawtooth waves. And by using the color and the timbre functions, we can tune them separately. So let's mute this voice here. 
and connect the macro oscillator, connect braids to the uh, stereo, uh, to the mono channel, so we can tune the different oscillators. Okay. Very nice. And we can also tune the main pitch all the way down, so we have a sort of a bass sound. And let's send the voltage from the Turing machine to the quantizer. And first of all, we can play a bit with the voltage coming out of the volts section here. And let's connect this to quantum. And from quantum, it will go to the volt per octave input of braids. And now let's add also a filter, so we will use tangents in this case from volt and connect braids to the low pass input of tangents and from there to our mixer and see how this sounds like. Okay, now let's raise the resonance a bit, maybe close the filter a bit more so we have a nice bass and let's add our melody. Okay, now let's use another segment uh, um, from stages to modulate the cutoff point of the filter. So let's set up another LFO again by clicking and holding here the mode button until it's looping, until it's uh, blinking here. And let's send, let's, let's see, wait a minute, let's see how it looks like on the scope. So we can change it a bit and of course connect also the clock to the gate input. Let's make it a bit, let's take it all the way down so it's really slow, let's change its shape a bit. Uh, and let's send this to the filter cutoff point, CV input of the filter and open the attenuator a bit. And of course we can also modulate the frequency of the LFOs uh, from, the, from stages with an audio rate signal. So let's set another LFO. So here we have another one. And let's add the even VCO from Befaco. Send the sawtooth wave to the time CV input of this segment. Let's do this. This is the CV inputs of the time and level, depends on which mode, uh, mode we are. And now let's connect the output to the scope and see how it looks like. And of course connect also our clock to the gate input so it's all nice and synced. Let's change the settings a bit. You can see the the different shapes of the LFO we are getting. Actually it's quite nice, I think I will leave it like this. And now we can use this to modulate the amplitude for example of another oscillator. So let's add the functional VCO, I will make space here. And let's add another, uh, or let's add a VCA, this is from the fundamental modules. And we can use the same pitch information coming out of the first quantum also for this oscillator, we have it already here coming out of the mult, so let's just connect it to the CV input of the functional VCO. And let's send a square wave through the VCA to the mixer. 
And the VCA we can modulate using the frequency modulated LFO. So let's take it out of the scope and connect it to the CV input of the VCA. Very nice. And now let's modulate another LFO with another segment and use this to modulate the pulse width of the oscillator. So let's create two more LFOs. Again, clicking and holding the mode button until it's looping. So we have two more LFOs. And let's sync one of them with our clock. And let's modulate its frequency with the other LFO, with the last one here. So we'll connect the output of this LFO to the uh, CV input, the time CV input of the LFO we want to modulate. And let's see how it looks like on the scope. Let's change the settings here a bit. Very nice. We can divide it. And this we can use to modulate the pulse width of the square wave, so let's take it out of the scope and into the PWM CV input of the functional VCO and open uh, the uh, attenuator a bit. And of course we can also play with the Turing machine. Change the sequence length and lock, lock it. Very nice, and this was using stages as a low frequency oscillator, using each segment as an independent LFO with the ability to sync the frequency with the clock, and let's move on to using stages as a step sequencer. Like we saw before, the yellow or orange mode is step mode, and with using this mode we can create a step sequencer with up to 6 steps. Now we can also add a glide between the steps by using the shape knobs for each segment. And let's start with building a 5 step sequence. Now like I said, we will walk our way from right to left, so if we want a 5 step sequence, we will count 5 segments from the right, and let's change the segments to step mode. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now all we have to do is connect a gate to the gate input of the first step, and this will decide where our sequence will begin. I will use the main clock for this, and it's already set up with a bit of swing to it. So I will just connect the clock to the mult, and from the mult to the gate input of the first um, step of the sequence we want to use. And uh, you can see already that the sequence is running. The range of each step is from 0 to positive 8 volts, so let's add, let's add also an attenuator for reducing this range, um, because 8 volts is way too much for what we will need. So I will use the VCA from the fundamental modules, and let's take the, the attenuation all the way down. Let's add also a quantizer, I will use again quantum, and let's set up a scale, my favorite scale, C, E flat, G, B flat. Let's change also the quantize mode, so it will be, uh, it will quantize upwards. And now let's add an oscillator, and for this we will use plets. Now let's connect the CV output from our first step. From here uh, will come the voltage from all the different steps to the VCA. From the VCA to quantum, from quantum to the uh, volt per octave input of plets of our oscillator. And let's connect also the gate output of quantum to the trigger input of, uh, of the oscillator. 
Now let's connect this to the mixer and start playing with the um, different steps. Let's open the attenuator a bit. And now let's just start changing the steps and we will get a sequence. Let's look at it also on the scope. Now you can hear the uh, glides between the different steps. You can see them also on the scope if I go a bit closer. So let's turn the glides all the way down. Knobs to the left, no glide. And we can start adding uh, glides where we want. Now you can see it's a pretty square sequence. So let's add a glide, for example, here, just a bit. And here you can see it on the scope. Here's the glide, let's add a bit more glide. You see this here, this is the glide. Let's add one more even. And now we have a really interesting sequence. Now we can also use the last segment here, it's free. We can also use it as an LFO to modulate, for example, um, one step. So let's do this, let's create an LFO here again by uh, clicking and holding the mode button on ramp mode, the green mode. And now we have a free running LFO here, so let's connect it, um, sync it to the clock, again by connecting the clock to the gate input. And let's um, divide it, I think it's division by 4, if we take it all the way down. And let's modulate, um, let's modulate the fourth step. So now we have an even more interesting sequence, this is how it looks like. You can see the glides, you can hear the modulation. And let's add another voice. Let's add, um, let's duplicate everything. So I'll take uh, stages. And again, the VCA and quantum. And let's add between quantum and plats. Let's add the pitch tools module from 21 kilohertz. And now let's create, let's first of all initiate stages, control I. And let's create a three step sequence this time. So I will connect, I will count one, two, three from the right. So three steps and connect the gate to our clock. So now we have a three step sequence. Let's change it also to step mode by clicking once on the mode button. And you can see it's already running. And let's send again the voltage through the VCA to Quantum, now to the pitch, uh, pitch tools modules, and let's raise the pitch by 7 semitones, and send this here to the volt per octave input of our second oscillator. Let's also send the gate to the trigger input of plats. And let's see how this sounds like. And play, of course, with the steps here also. Let's play also with the glide. Let's see how this sequence looks like also on the scope. Take it down a bit. So this is our second sequence. Let's add the glide here in the middle. Very nice. Now here we have three, uh, three segments. If you want, we can create another sequence, three-step sequence. I will use this again as a three free-running LFOs. So let's turn all of them to LFOs, clicking and holding the mode button for one second until they blink. So they are now uh, looping on themselves. And let's connect. Let's first of all turn them down, all the way down, so they're really slow. This is very nice. 
Okay, let's add another voice, and again, let's just copy everything, also the pitch tools module. One, two, let's take it here to the left. Let's duplicate quantum, and the pitch tools module, and plats. And let's initialize stages, control I. Let's create a six step sequence this time. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's take already glide all the way down. And let's play a bit with the faders already. Let's take this up. So now we have a six step sequence and we will connect it also to the clock. And you can see it's already running. Now let's connect the CV output from the first step to the VCA, then to quantum, from quantum to the pitch tools module, and let's lower the uh, pitch here by five semitones, one, two, three, four, five, and connect this to the volt per octave input of our oscillator. And let's see how this sounds like. Oh, and of course the gate output also from quantum to the trigger input of plats. Very nice, let's add some glide. Let's add it here. And let's have a look at this sequence also. This is our sequence, let's add two glides. You can see them here on the scope. Okay, now let's add even one more voice, and, but this time it will be a sort of a lead voice, so let's use the FM operator um, for this from Bog Audio. And let's duplicate again stages, again let's initialize it also. And duplicate our VCA and Quantum. Now let's set up another five step sequence. So again, counting from right to left. One, two, three, four, five. And now we can connect our clock, but let's, let's connect it to a much slower clock this time. So I have here a clock divided by eight. So you can see it's running, but it's running really slowly. And let's send again the output through the VCA, the CV output from the first step to the VCA, from there to quantum, from quantum to the volt per octave input of the FM operator. This time I will not use the gate function of quantum, I want it to be uh, uh, heard all the time. And let's use the last segment here, we have another segment we didn't use, let's use it again as an LFO. So I click and hold the mode button until it blinks. And let's sync it with our clock. This time we'll take a clock division. Um, it's divided by two, so it's much slower. Not, not so much like the sequence itself, but still it's slower than the main clock. Let's take it all the way down. And let's uh, connect it to the feedback amount CV input of the FM operator and open the feedback amount just a bit. And let's connect it to our mixer and see how this sounds like. And of course we can play with the glides. And we should play also with the... Very nice. So we have two glides here. Let's open the attenuator also a bit. So see this sequence on the scope. Mm -hmm. 
And you see how, how intuitive and easy it is to create interesting sequences and also adding glide between the steps which is also interesting and of course you can use it also for all sorts of modulations you don't need to use it uh, specifically for pitch and now let's have a look at how to use stages as a very complex envelope generator okay so i have to say this part will be a bit more complicated and there will be a lot of information so i will put timestamp links in the description to all the different ideas i show here so if you want you can just watch the part you had trouble with and go through it again now with using stages we can create all sorts of envelopes and it's all up to how we choose to patch things and how we set everything up so let's start with creating simple one stage decay envelopes so we cannot control the attack time or the time it takes to the modulation to reach its highest point we can only control the time and shape of the decay or the time it takes for the modulation to reach its lowest point so for this we will stay in ramp mode and by connecting a gate to the gate input of the segment we want to use we create the decay envelope and for this I'm using topograph from valley to generate our gates so let's connect the trigger output from topograph to the first gate input of the segment generator now with the fader we can control the time of the decay and with the knob we can control the shape, the decay shape. So let's connect it shortly to the scope and let's see how this looks like. And again, um, down means shorter, shorter decay time and up means longer decay time. And we can set this to be, so in the middle it's linear. To the left it's logarithmic with a curve outwards, to the right it's exponential with a curve inwards. And let's start adding voices, uh, we will use the functional VCO for this. This is uh, actually the fundamental VCO in the Squinky Labs version, it's more CPU efficient. And let's add also a VCA. Again, this one from the fundamental modules and connect the CV output of the segment we are using to the CV input of the VCA. So we can see it's already running and send a triangle wave from our oscillator to the VCA. And now let's duplicate this. I will duplicate the functional uh, VCO and the VCA. And let's add also the pitch tools modules again from 21 kilohertz. So we can have a different pitch for the second oscillator and let's raise it by seven semitones. Now let's send another trigger from topograph to another segment of stages and have another decay envelope. Let's look at it also on the scope. Again, the fader controls the time and the uh, knob controls the shape. And let's use this to modulate the second VCA and see how this sounds like connected to our stereo channel here let's play with this a bit okay very snappy very nice now i also have the grid sequencer from jw modules so we will use this to modulate the pitch of both oscillators once directly i have also a mult here so once directly and once through the pitch, um, pitch tools module. Very nice. And now we can use also another output from topograph and its accent output to trigger two more decay envelopes. So let's use this output and also the accent output. And we have two more decay envelopes here. And we can use them to modulate the decay time of both of the envelopes we already use. So let's take the CV output to the CV or the time CV input of the um, a, a decay envelope and also with the second one. And let's play with their time a bit. So now we have also a variation in volume and amplitude.
very nice okay so now let's create a two stage attack decay envelope so we have control on the attack time and the decay time again we will work from right to left so we can use the last two segments we have three and we will connect the accent output from the first part of top topograph um, to trigger this envelope so let's take the accent trigger output and trigger our envelope again we have an attack and decay two segments two stages and from right to left this is the attack and this is the decay now let's see how this looks like on the scope You see we can control also the attack time so it's really snappy and percussive <clears throat> or a bit more attack and again we can change also the shapes and let's add now another voice so we will use the even VCO this time from Befaco and also tangents from Vult and let's add of course another VCA and let's use another pitch tools module um, to modulate also the pitch of uh, this oscillator and let's take it up by five semitones this time one two three four five and let's use the um, attack decay envelope we've created to modulate the VCA very nice and let's send the sawtooth wave through tangents to the VCA through the low pass input of tangents and from there to the mixer already we have something and um, let's create a sort of a bass sound this time take the resonance a bit up and now we have another output here the decay output it looks like this and we can use this to modulate the cutoff point of the filter so let's do this connection open the attenuverter a bit very nice and now let's send pitch information to this oscillator again from the grid sequencer through the pitch tools module and see how this sounds like take it one octave down maybe Let's change this envelope a bit, maybe a quicker attack. Longer decay. Very nice. So now we have one stage decay envelopes, two stage attack decay envelopes. And now let's create a four stage ADSR attack, decay, sustain and release envelope. So let me just mute this for a second. So here we have another stages and again working from right to left. Let's count four segments and use the trigger coming out of the trigger module from AS. So one, two, three, four. Then we have attack, decay, sustain and release and you will see also why I'm using this module in a second and um, so now we have four stages attack in ramp mode so we can control the attack time and shape using the fader and the knob decay also in ramp mode for controlling decay time and shape and now we have sustain and sustain is not time dependent sustain is a value of level and not of time so we can use for this the hold mode it's the third mode the red one and the fader in this case will control the level of sustain and here we have actually two options with looping or without looping again we can click and hold for one second the mode uh, button and it's looping on itself with looping the sustain will stay as long as the gate we are using to activate the envelope is on and without looping we can control the duration of the sustain with this segment's knob and don't worry we will see this in action in a second but we have also the release stage 
again in ramp mode for controlling the release time and shape. And let's look at this on the scope. So let's uh, take the attack time, make it a short attack time, a longer decay time. We can set the sustain level to be pretty high and a longer release. And now when I click the latch button here, it will um, open a gate and we will see what happens on the scope. Attack, decay, and now this is a sustain stage and it will stay on um, as long as the gate is open. And you can see it here, it's still open. And when I turn it off, it goes in the release stage. Let's uh, look at this again. Let's have the attack a bit longer. So now I will click on it, attack, decay, and now it will stay in the sustain level that we have here and we can change it also. Let's make it a bit lower. So this is now our sustain and the gate is still on. It's still open. So we still have a, a sustain on. And when I click it and I turn the gate off, it will go in the release stage. Now this is when it's on uh, looping mode. Let's turn the looping off. And now the sustain will stay on uh, according to the settings of this knob, which controls the duration of the sustain. So we can now actually trigger this uh, envelope with a trigger, also a really short trigger. We don't have to use a gate. So let's see now what happens when I just uh, trigger this envelope. Attack, decay, and now sustain and release and we can control the duration of the sustain here. So let's make it a longer sustain and again trigger it. Attack, decay, sustain and release. So again, with looping, with the sustain looping, it will stay on so long or as long as the gate is open. And without looping, we can change the duration of the sustain with this knob here. So now let's add another voice and let's use again the even VCO. So I will just duplicate it. And let's use again tangents and another VCA. And let's use the envelope we've created to modulate uh, the VCA, but also the filter uh, cutoff point. And let's send an even waveform to the lowest input of tangents and to the VCA. And now let's duplicate also the grid sequencer. So we have another uh, sequencer to send pitch information. And let's send it actually directly already to the volt per octave input of the even VCO. And let's use the trigger module to trigger also the, um, the sequencer. So when I trigger the envelope, also the sequencer has been triggered and there's a change in pitch. And let's see how this sounds like now. Let's connect the VCA to our mixer and turn the volume on. And let's see how this sounds like with this setting. Let me just take the octave maybe a bit up. Let's see how this sounds like. And let's uh, turn it on uh, the looping mode again of the sustain. And let's open the gate. And it will stay in the sustain level until I turn it off. Let's do this one more time with a higher sustain level. Again, it will stay on, it will stay up until I uh, turn the gate off. And now let's do this without looping. And again, this knob will control the duration of the sustain. Very nice. Let's turn the duration a bit down. And uh, what we can also do is we can also trigger the trigger module with the clock. So let's use a much slower clock for this. I have a division of 12 here. Let's use this to trigger the trigger um, uh, module here. Very nice. 
let's make the duration of the sustain a bit longer. Okay, very nice. So we've created a one-stage decay envelopes, two-stage attack decay envelopes, four-stage ADSRs, and now let's see how to create more envelopes with even more stages. Okay, so here I have already a few modules ready for us, and let's start by creating a five-stage envelope attack hold, decay, sustain, and release. It means that the modulation will rise in the attack time, then it will hold for a certain amount of time, then it will decay to the sustain level, and then, it depends on the release settings, go back to zero. So we have one more step, the hold step, and let's see how we can create something like that. So here we have stages and let's count five stages from the right and connect the trigger output from the grid sequencer to the gate input. So here I have the trigger output from the mult, one, two, three, four, five. Now let's look at the modes I set up. We have the first stage in ramp mode. So this is our attack. The second stage is in hold mode and it's not looping. So the hold time is set by the knob and the level by the fader. Then we have another one in ramp mode and this is our decay. And then another one in hold mode, our sustain. Here it's again not looping, so its duration is set again by this knob here. And finally we have our release in again ramp mode. And let's connect the CV output to the envelope scope so we can see what's going on. So here we can see it starts uh, the attack time really slow attack, and then the hold, decay, up until the sustain level, and release. Now let's start adding voices. We have a plats here set in chords mode, and we have another stages set as a six step sequencer. So let's connect the first step to the trigger output of the grid sequencer and the CV output through a mult to the timbre CV input of plets. So every time the envelope is being triggered, also the step sequencer is being triggered, and with each step we get a different sound out of plets. Let's also use the last segment of the first stages to an LFO, so we can see it's already in loop mode, and let's sync it with our main clock and modulate again through the mult the morph function of plats. Now we can connect the CV output of the grid sequencer to the volt per octave input of the oscillator, and the CV output of the envelope to the level input of the oscillator. So this envelope will control the amplitude of plats, and let's see how this sounds like. Attack hold, decay, sustain level, and release. Now there's another cool thing we can do, we can set a signal delay before the envelope kicks in. So here we have another stages, and it's more or less the same envelope, just that there is one more step at the start, set in hold mode, with the level at zero. This means that first there will be a hold stage before the attack stage, what creates a sort of a signal delay. So let's make the connections and add another voice using this envelope. We will connect again the trigger from the trigger output of the grid sequencer. And let's connect the CV output to our envelope scope so we can see what's going on. And you can see this is already in the hold stage, this is just in the attack stage.
And let's connect it also to the level input of another plates we have here. And let's connect also the CV output of the grid sequencer through the pitch tools module to the volt per octave input of plates. This time it's set on 7 semitones higher. And we can also connect the same LFO and step sequencer to these plates. Again, to the timbre input, CV input, and to the morph CV input. And now we can listen to how this sounds like, so let's, let's connect it also to the mixer. And you can see the first envelope is already ending. And the second one just now ends. So again, here attack, here hold. Now here attack and here it's going already to the hold mode. So we created a sort of a signal delay before the envelope kicks in. Now there is another really nice trick we can do with another hold stage. If we put it in the end of the envelope, we can use it as an end of cycle trigger. So every time the envelope ends, it will fire up a trigger we can use for triggering other modules. So here I have another stages set up, this time with a two stages attack decay envelope and the hold stage at the end. So every time the envelope reaches the hold stage, it will send out a trigger out of this output. So first let's connect our clock to the first stage of this envelope. And for this I have a multiplied clock setup, multiplied by 4. And we also have the even VCO, tangents and a VCA. So let's connect the CV output of the first stage to the CV input of the VCA. So this attack decay envelope would modulate the amplitude of uh, the even VCO. And we can connect the CV output of the decay stage to the filter's cutoff point CV input. So the decay stage will modulate the cutoff point. And let's send a sawtooth wave through the low pass input of tangents to the VCA and from there to the mixer and see how this sounds like. It's already a bit more dramatic. Now I have also the FM operator and we will trigger it by using the end of cycle trigger we set up with the last uh, stage here, the hold stage. So let's connect it to the gate input of the FM operator. And I have also a three step sequence set up, so let's connect it also to the same clock. This is the three step sequence, it's all in step mode. And let's send its CV output through the quantizer from JW to the volt per octave input of the oscillator. And we can also use the LFO from the first stages we used here to modulate its feedback amount. And let's listen to how this sounds like. So you can hear how the voice coming from the FM operator starts whenever the envelope of the bass comes to an end.
Now you can create even more crazy envelopes and I encourage you to go and check out the manual, there are some really nice examples there. But now let's move on to some other funky stuff we can do with this beautiful module. And let's start with creating looping envelopes. So let's say that we want to create a three stage looping envelope. So all we have to do is set the first and last stage to ramp in looping mode. And again, we will start from right to left. And the stage in the middle, we will set to hold mode. And for this, we will need a dummy cable, a cable that has no voltage going through it, just to group the different stages and set from where the envelope will start. So let's connect the output of the VCA to the first stage of the envelope and this will act as our dummy cable. So now the segments are connected and looping and let's see how it looks like on the scope. And again with the first fader and knob we can change the attack time and its shape. With the hold fader we can change the maximum level and with the knob the hold duration. And with the last fader and knob, we can control the release time and its shape. So we have a looping envelope that we can use for any kind of modulation we want. And of course, we can also add more segments. So let's do this quickly. Let's add one more segment. Take this one out of looping mode. Change the place of our dummy cable one step forward. And let's set the first step now to looping mode. So now those four steps are connected and are a group. Let's change the second step to hold mode. And now we will get this sort of shape and it's looping. And again, we can use it for whatever modulation we want. And now let's look at how we can create a sample and hold unit using the step mode. So let's disconnect everything and initialize stages. Now the idea behind it is to use step mode while modulating the step CV input and while triggering the step. So with each trigger, the step will hold the voltage of the incoming modulation. And let's see how we can make this. So we have here the try LFO from AS, which is three LFOs in one module. And let's send a square wave, which will be our clock to the gate input of the first segment from the right. Now let's modulate this segment CV input with a sine wave from another LFO, change this segment to step mode, and take the level all the way down. Now we can see how it looks like on the scope. So we get a sort of a stepped sine wave with using this segment as a sample and hold unit. And of course, we can also change the frequency of the square wave for a higher sample rate. Now we can also use the step mode as a sort of a sequential switch, switching between different modulations. So let's again disconnect everything and initialize stages. And the idea behind this is to modulate the steps level with what we want to switch through. And with each step of the sequence, that will be the voltage coming out. So let's connect six different waveforms from our LFO to six level CV inputs of stages. And let's change all the segments to step mode and lower the level of each segment. Let's turn off also the glide for all segments so we have a smooth transition between the steps. Now we can connect a clock from our LFO to the gate input of the first step. And now, as you can see, with each step, a different source will come out of the CV output of the sequence. And here I have a patch ready, so we have the even VCO sending a sawtooth wave to new rage, the new low pass gate from volt, and from there to a stereo channel. Now I have stages here set up with two sequential switches, switching between different clock rates, and you can see this on the scope. New rage is set to unlink mode, so both gate inputs work independently. And the even VCO receives speech information from the grid sequencer. And let's listen to how this sounds like. Now 
You could hear the change in gates and also how the cutoff point of new range moves separately with each sequential switch. Now, of course, we can also use this at audio rate signals. So here we have the FM operator going through four different effects before going to the level CV inputs of stages, a reverb, a delay, a phaser, and a shaper. And from there it goes through tangents to the mixer. Now, when using stages as a sequential switch for audio, you get this nice crunchy tone to it, so you can use this to your advantage, and let's listen to how this sounds like. And let's add also the bass. And let's add also a kick, just for fun. Okay guys, I think it was enough for today, there are more cool things we can do with stages and this will come in future videos, but for now I think we have enough to explore and experiment with. It's amazing how many things such a relatively simple module can do, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, please hit the like button, if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe and hit the bell, and have a good one.